That card is huge. Take those measurements and let's be gone from this place. The Lyrians managed to repel the monsters and reach both peaks. Upon each, Meave ordered her men to take the measurements. While waiting, she admired the breathtaking view of the Mahakaman Massif. The Mahaka. The dwarven contraption left no room for doubt. The peak within the Dahlberg clan territory was two feet higher than that within Hoog territory. Wow. Gabor was clearly displeased with the results. Damn it all! I'd hope he'd prove Bruver's clan was in the right. He'd have been content to see the Dalbergs knock down a peg or two. And, possibly, he'd have been more inclined to help you, said the dwarf in frustration. Then, after a pause, he added, Although, only you saw what the device showed, Queen. Perhaps you could, uh, recalibrate the results a wee bit? Hell no, we're giving the true ones. To lie would be simple, true, said Meave. Yet to forget the matter would be so much harder. No, Gabor, I shall tell the truth. The Queen's tone made it clear the discussion was over. Gabor let the matter lie, and Meave's force began its descent down the mountainside. Ain't gonna lie. Hey, we're back up to normal. Nice. The dwarves of both clans had been waiting with bated breath for the expedition's return and report. As soon as Meave announced the results, the Dahlbergs rolled barrels of beer out into the square and began to celebrate. <laughs> Naturally, the Hoogs were disappointed, yet they accepted Meave's results as final. At last, they had come to trust her. Hey! That's good. All right. For first bite, it best avail yourself of some onion juice. Even better if you had a wee nip of vodka. As Meave neared Langbridge, she ordered her bugler to announce her arrival, then retired to her tent to freshen up. Gascon was already inside, awaiting her. After all I've done, if he doesn't give me his help, I'm gonna be pissed. I do not seem to recall summoning you. In that case, I must tell you to fret not. Nothing wrong with your memory. I've come with no agenda. Spontaneously, call it, to chat. Hmm. Then I propose you leave. Just as spontaneously call it. I must don fresh clothes. I'm to see the elder soon, and I'd prefer to not smell of horse sweat. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. <sighs> Doubt it'd make much difference to him. And be assured, I know what I speak of. When last we met, I found myself standing downwind of him. A pungent experience. Well, Hugh saved the experience of his breath. So pungent, I thought I might faint. Well, to revive you, pinch you awake, I'm sure would be quite a pleasure. <coughs> Jesus. Gascon, I beg your pardon. Ugh, I shall have nightmares now. Not tonight. For I fear you might not sleep at all. You see... What the fuck? Where are you going with this? There's something you ought to know. <coughs> And decidedly, before you meet with Bruva. Uh-oh. The sights we cleared of beasts, I ferreted a bit. Noted something peculiar. Any notion what it was? None. The monumental dwarven architecture, perhaps? Bones, my dear Meave. Dwarven bones. Now, guess what I found on them? Wait, don't dare give me any hints. Fight <laughs> marks. Of course. After all, they'd been gnawed clean of all flesh by monsters, incidentally making it quite easy to spot other markings. Ones made by axes and swords. To be certain, I showed the bones to our medics, and they confirmed my conclusion. Meaning what? 
but the entire clan, the Fuchses, did not perish due to an invasion of beasts from the depths. The monsters merely ate the bodies and occupied empty homes. Now, I shared my discovery with Gabor, and guess what he did? He panicked. He started to squirm, babble nonsense. I wager my right arm, he's hiding something. Blast. Overly eager to aid us from the start he was. I might have sent something. I shall have him summoned at once. And I thank you, Gascon. I won't forget this. Minutes later, Gabor stood before the Queen. At first, he tried to mislead her with evasive answers, but as her pointed questions demolished one clumsy excuse after another, he had to give in. Oy. As King Desmond said after a hefty squirt in his hose, we can't sweep this under the rug. If you think I welcome jests in this moment, you err. My fingers itch to summon the hangman. Right. So. Tis true. I misled you. On our clan elders' orders, supposed to make sure you destroyed Boris Rump and Davos Abyss thoroughly enough to leave near trace. What? Why? What did they wish to hide? They was home to the Fuchses, our mortal enemies. They'd been a-boil in our heinies for ages, thumbing their noses, taking what they want, when they want, and the Elder-in-Chief didn't give a plowing wit. So to stop them, our clan, we did the unpardonable. The Zigrin Elders saw their chance and they... Gods. So you were responsible for the deaths of all those dwarves? Me? I, I, I didn't raise a finger, tried to stop them, in fact. No witnesses survived, <clears throat> meaning you must have murdered the entire clan. Oh. How? Queen, you sure you... I am, and you should be sure to answer in full, omitting no detail. Bitch. <laughs> Few years back, we got pummeled by a horrendous winter. Stone-breaking frosts, white-out storms, avalanches. Made travelling a painful form of suicide. Hunger drove beasts out of their dens. Pass was covered in the filth. <laughs> Got to where they paced right outside the walls. Fuchses fought a hard, bloody fight to keep the critters out of Davar's abyss. Lost near every axe-wielding dwarf they had. Only survivors had to winter at Burr's Rump. Their elders felt such an opportunity would they knock again. After killing the town's meagre guard, they... They set fire to it and barricaded the gates. They, they didn't stand a chance. Bastards. How in the world did the truth go undiscovered? Once it were over, our dwarves opened the gates. Before they'd lit their pipes, starving beasts came crawling out of the pass. The stank of dead flesh were strong. Zigrins who came back from that never were the same. If you'd only gandered their gaze when they had us all take a vow of silence. And then... You invented that blarney about primeval monstrosities the Fuchses had awoken by mining too deep. A riveting tale, and one with a moral to boot. Aye. But the Elders worried Bruver would suspect something all the same. That's why they wanted you to destroy all the evidence. Repugnant. Repugnant. You claim not to have taken part, but neither did you do anything to stop the massacre. What was I to do exactly? The elders had decided. Nay, a dwarf would listen to me. You might have informed the elder in chief. The guilty would have been punished. The guilty? You didn't ken Bruva. He'd punish the whole clan, women, children. Nay exceptions. Meave, Queen. I'm begging you. He cannot ever learn of this. Aye, I want a hack flame too when I think what the Elder's done. But other way it'd bring but more pain and death. You've got a lot of nerve, making requests after lying to me. Trying to ensure you can the stakes. But you'll do as you see fit. Yes, I will. Like always. Yes. I need to consider what's right. 
Meanwhile, Gascon, make sure Gabor remains our guest. Of course. I'll let you know if he so much as rolls his eyes towards an escape route. Oh boy! <coughs> I'm tell. I'm gonna tell him. Oh, nice. No, oh, continue. Bruva stood by the bridge like a statue, arms crossed, eyes squinting. Me sighed inside. She stood little chance of having a pleasant chat. <laughs> Elder in chief, sir. No Saren and Grayson here, lass. Plowed humans. Always out to fix things, always end up cocking them up. You think you're due glory, do you? Monster slayer Meave? Patroness of dwarves? Blast it. What do you think? Why didn't I exterminate those beasts myself, eh? Go on, tell me. For you. For I didn't want to. For something didn't affect, damn it. So I resolved to not destroy their nests and evidence till I learned the truth of who done it. Postponed it all those years expressly. Though your subjects were dying. I didn't need no lectures from the likes of you. Justice must be served. That's worth any price. And I was close. Had leads. And now it's all gone to hell. You flooded the Vor's abyss. You brought Boros rump down on itself. And I'll never care who killed the Fuchses. Understand? Never! I'm telling him. I would not be so sure. <clears throat> sure of bloody what? That you shall never learn the truth. For I learnt it just moments ago. Twas the Zigrins who killed the Fuchses. The Sig... Sigrins? But... Hold, hold. I would explain a lot, but... Ah, the snakes! Worms! Rogues! Why, I'll show them! <clears throat> right. Got to admit you've more in that pretty heat of yours than I expected. But dinner you start thinking we'll be toasting a new friendship. You want our aid? You'll have to answer our questions. My questions. That's fine. Lots of them. I'll and answer them. all hard. So <laughs> dinner you go smiling at the end. <laughs> and they're all hard questions. <laughs> Why, I wouldn't dare. Better not. Right. Time we moved on. Ruva set off at a brisk <laughs> pace, paying Meave nor anyone else heed. The Elder's bodyguards rushed after him. Then came the Lyrian force. And at its end trudged Gabor Zigrin. Hands and feet in shackles. You fucker. Yeah, removed. I don't need you anyway. I've not been using you. Can the audience at Mount Carbon? On Lang Bridge, it is strictly forbidden to stomp, jump, lean over the edge, stop for rest, carve runes in their hand rows. Hoo hoo ha! Oh, God. Fucking hoo hoo ha thing. <laughs> Dwarves demonstrate innovative thinking in many domains metallurgy, engineering, architecture. Yet there is one in which they could not be bothered naming. <laughs> For this reason, the bridge that linked the Mahakam Pass with Mount Carbon was simply named Langbridge. Meave learned it was a thoroughly fitting name. Having stopped for a breath halfway across the road suspended over a deep chasm, the Queen could see neither end of the bridge, both concealed by thick clouds. Amazing, <clears throat> whispered the Queen. I feel as though we traversed the very sky. The Queen and her retinue were nearing Mount Carbon when Meave heard a cry. It was Xavier. Hold! Hold! Meave drew in her reins abruptly. Her mare neighed and reared, lifting the queen above her formation of men. From that height, she saw the last pier of the bridge crumbling. The dwarves at the head of the procession were unable to stop in time and plummeted, screaming into the abyss. What's the meaning of this, God damn it? Bruva roared. Face the engineers! No! The queen was striving to calm her spooked mount when she sent something swish past her ear. Out of nowhere, a Scoyatel band had appeared no! at the rear of the column. The Scoyatels! Before anyone could react, elven archers had felled the rear guard. 
The soldiers lay on the bridge's stone surface with arrows in their backs. Meave was trapped. Shut up, In one bitch. direction lay the chasm, <laughs> in the other, a fierce foe. She had no choice but to stand and fight. Short and battle, extra cards. Oh. The Lyrians, uh, the Battle of Langbridge. The Lyrians watched in disbelief as Squirtle warriors slit the throats of Mahakam guards. How could this be? Non-humans against non-humans? To what end? Could it be the elder races do not uniformly support the squirrel's cause? No doubt these questions are more plagued the men's thoughts, yet this was not the time to entertain them. This was a time to fight. <clears throat> and fight we shall. Okay, short in battle, so we're good. I like the short in battles! Okay. Oh. Oh, I don't need you. Move a unit. Move uh, move a unit one row away from the opponent. my cards <laughs> uh yeah we'll go with this i'm gonna keep him last, Rena, you are mine what we trapped your grace but we can Never try and fight our way through those clips right <gasps> oh yeah. ah damn it ah, the key ball bags can do whatever the devils you please this is Mahakam! Ah! See ya, dude! <laughs> oh, that was funny. <laughs> Show me the coin or sod off. Show me the coin or sod off. Whatever, bitch. Do this. I. Just because they get resilience, so... <laughs> Wait! This is one battle, what am I doing? Or this is... It doesn't matter if they have resilience. It's one turn. Me. Or one round. Oh, shh. Night. Yo, let's do this. Sick, dude. Ah, oh. listen to me, old lady. That's huge. Got business for me. Whatever. <laughs> Watch this. My spirit's willing and how, but these dumb boots are killing me. Have to do. <laughs> got four of them out there. Damn. God, I. Guess I really should have. Uh, you know what I could do? I'm gonna wait till he plays. What the? Uh oh. I'm gonna wait until he plays. Okay, now check this. Check this out. This is going to be awesome. Let's <clears throat> guess, guess. They're not Your tricks here. will not save you, Dwan. Dwan. Stop! Check this out. Oh, damn it! I only can only do one of them. Eh, whatever. Take this guy. Hey! Get rid of these three. Bye! <laughs> Shoot. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. I don't think it matters if he dies, right? I don't think so. May your sword and arm be <clears throat> one. Yikes. 
That's not good. Oh, whatever. I don't think I... <clears throat> I don't think I lose if he dies, right? I didn't say that, no. Uh, let's put you right next to that. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Uh-oh. <laughs> None shall tread on us! Why didn't you play that first? No! Oh man. <clears throat> Left, right, left, right. Ah! I don't know why, why, why did I not boost him? Yeah, whatever. Okay, he's not damaged, so nice. Again and again and again. We'll catch them all! Yeah, 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 I win. <clears throat> no! Blederena! Yeah. She must die! Fuck you! <sighs> Fucking bitch. <laughs> Their strength combined, the Lyrians and dwarves managed to Idiot. defeat the Scoia'tael. The gorillas had weakened the last span of the bridge, turning the crossing into a deadly trap. Had Xavier, who noticed the weakened structure at the last instant, not called out, all would have fallen into the chasm. The Lyrians managed to capture Ooh. the unit commander. <clears throat> she stood, her head raised high, and when Meave glared at her, she did not avert her eyes. Crow's eye. What is your name, elf? What is your name, bitch? Abayat <laughs> me a past one. Suck my dick! That's what she, she said. said uh... <laughs> Thank you, Reynard. I know well what she said. Kiss my ass. Is that truly the best you can muster? I'd rather show you exactly what I can muster. <laughs> Tell them to unbind me. I just, I already beat you, so. You got your opportunity on the battlefield. Will you not tell me what they call you? Fine. It's all the same to me. I'm more interested to know how you came to be here. Who sent you? No one. It was my decision to kill you and thus avenge Eldane. You've elven blood on your hands. The blood of the elves of the Mulderwood. Whatever. Eldane was a criminal. He got what he deserved. You call him a criminal? What do you call humans who murder our kind in pogroms? Who massacre us? What do you call Black Rayla who fought at your side? Do not dare compare us. Do not dare! Well, I just did. Enough. I've heard all I wish to hear. But I haven't. Oh. Did you uh -oh. fall in your heed, Elf? Eh? If you want to fight humans, go on and do it. You cannot talk sense to Egypts, but nay here, damn it. Mahakam is and will be neutral. You cannot be neutral. To Dwan, you are either their foe or their dog. Mahakam has stood aside sleeping long enough. That is why we struck it in its very heart. As a call to battle. A call to brethren whom you, Elder, have kept from the world too long. I have kept him away. I've been bloody right to do so. You want to play at war, you numpties? <laughs> you want to force the Pontar to flow upstream? You numpties. Gang right ahead. <laughs> Good riddance, I say. Gun kill, gun die if you fancy, but God damn it, leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, I should kill you with my own hands. I should cut your throat, put you out of your misery. That's what you want, in it? To die? To die a stupid death? Well, I'll not grant you that. Nay, nay, I'll lock you in a tower. Sit there three centuries. And you just might grow a brain. Boover Hoof <laughs> gazed after the shackled Damn. elf as she was led away. Neve expected him to continue fuming, cursing her. But the dwarf stood silent. 
and his old eyes, half concealed by brows bushy as a forest floor, showed not anger, but the deepest sadness. Dwarven engineers made quick work of repairing the crumbled bridge span. Oh, that's good. I guess that's what I'll have to do for the time being. <laughs> Let's make camp right here. <laughs> what a... Okay, what are some new cards I got? Where's the crow one? Can I not get a crow one? Oh, there it is. Move six or an man. Random enemies to the other roll and damage them by two. Ooh, wow, that's pretty good. I'm fine with what I got, though. Look, Mount Carbon. Damn, and I thought Novograd was big. Mount Carbon. Wipe your feet, comb your beard, but foreign garb bring not in here. Carbon's heart. Can you hear the throb? You're a dwarf, damn it, not a slob. Hoo hoo ha. <laughs> so the elves are against us. Yeah, apparently. Apparently the elves suck. The Lyrians stepped inside Mount Carbon's bowels. Meave rode while looking upwards, admiring the intricately carved ceiling, gilded walls, monumental bas reliefs carved from basalt. Basalt. This was no time to admire the sights. Ruva Hoog had summoned her to speak. And speak we shall. I thank you for your invitation, Elder. My invitation? Choice term, lass. You wangled your way in here. Long I've lived, but ne'er have I seen a wench so stubborn. With all due respect, do you not feel like a pot conversing with a kettle? Ha! <laughs> True enough. Changes of mind didn't come easy to me. But they do come at times. Human wars concern me not at all. For so many they are, who could count them? Nay, a year goes by without one wanking king invading another's realm. A dog with scabies is less restless. <laughs> That's why this morning I aim to send you off with nothing. Matter not what the clans were saying. Rivia, Shmivia, who gives a sheep? Rivia, Shmivia. But that <laughs> this the morning, part. before that daft wench and her pups attacked. Nilfgaard supports the Scoyatel, it's common knowledge. Nilfgaard uses them. Well, I'm nay worse, and I choose to use Queen Meave. So what use would you make of me, if I might ask? You've a plan? Aye, the kind dwarves like best. Simple, but sneaky. Like to give Nilfgaard a warning, you can. If you're going to rile my dwarves, draw them into the Scoyatel ranks, you'll regret it, aye? But I'd like to issue the warning without declaring war. All clear to you so far? Sure. So. When you march out of Mahakam, you'll find a company of our foot dwarves waiting out with the gate. Officially, volunteers enlisting with you against my will. Okay. And you're to put them at the fore next time you face Nilfgaard. Want the black lads to break their teeth on our bucklers, get a taste of our axe blades. After that, dare say they'll think twice before they send more Scoyatel into these hells. I do not. Thank you, Elder. You restore my hope that I shall have my home back in the end. Faith can move mountains, aye, but it cannot do much about borders. I've watched you close, and must admit you're a plucky lass. That enough for Nilfgaard? Gotta be sure. We will see. We shall know soon. Yes. Yes, we shall. Volunteer Corps. Uh, Mahakam Mangler. Oh gosh, that looks that that dude. I think that dude's dead. <laughs> Just gonna say right now. Mahakam Shieldbreaker. I would like to march at once. So by your leave. Nay, <laughs> not granted. At once. What 
does that mean? Our laws are clear. Guests are to be sent off with a thundering feast. Even the humans. Bruva, oh. as was Bruva's okay. wont, insisted. So the queen accepted the invitation, but as was her wont, set a condition. The feast was to last but one night, and not, as was the wont of local custom, an entire week. <laughs> Sheepers. All clans were to be represented at the feast, save one, of course, the Zigrins, for they had already learned their punishment. The entire clan was banished from Mahakam. 